Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't want to be redundant. <laughs> I think that uh, if we haven't figured out by now, um, we know that y'all are constantly failing, right? And honestly, our job is to win for the American people. And so while this committee tends to be probably the most divided committee um, in the Congress, especially this Congress, it is amazing the times that we can agree. And we agree that right now taxpayer dollars are being wasted. I'ma just keep it all the way real. Um, and, and what's frustrating to me is that while I applaud my colleagues from the other side of the aisle, bringing this and pointing out that there is definitely a ridiculous amount of waste when it comes to defense, and that doesn't mean I'm anti-defense before the haters on Twitter start getting crazy, um, because we all want to be free, we all want to feel safe here in this country, and we appreciate what defense does for us, but everyone has to be held accountable, especially when we are dealing with the budget deficits that we're dealing with, especially when we are dealing with the inflation that we're dealing with. And unfortunately, I sat through Rules Committee this week and it took everything in me not to blow up because I had colleagues from the other side of the aisle as we are dealing with NDAA and we have real things to address, such as how are we going to get DOD on track? Do you know what they wanted to talk about? Do you know what these amendments are gonna deal with? They're gonna deal with things that don't have anything to do with the budget, such as they want to talk about if they're going to deny access to healthcare for women. That's a priority in NDAA. They wanted to talk about whether or not trans folk would have access to the health care that they need. That's what they want to talk about. Um, they want to deal with the things, and of course they want to fight about Ukraine and not recognize that it is important that this modern day democracy is upheld. So what I want to talk about is getting to the point that, number one, we only got here because there were certain people that decided that they were gonna hold the entire country hostage in the debt ceiling fight. And so as part of the agreement, the agreement was that all of those people that need Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, all of those programs that people are relying upon, SNAP benefits as we're dealing with record inflation, they got less money and defense got more. That is exactly what happened. Somebody got more, somebody got less because we cared more about let's try to balance the budget on the backs of people that are only getting $6 a day for things like SNAP benefits instead of focusing on the waste that's going on here. And so the only question that I have for you is what do you need from us? What is needed so that we can actually stop being performative? Because what I don't want us to do is try to pretend as if we really care about this waste that's going on by having this hearing on the same day that as it's already been said by my colleague, Mr. Biggs, this is gonna get voted out and y'all are gonna get more money. That's gonna happen. And you know what? We're still gonna have more people that are facing homelessness in this country. We're still gonna have more people that are hungry in this country. And honestly, I can promise you, I would rather give more people that $6 a day to eat than to sit here and say, well, we just haven't fixed it. If we know that the problem is that we have not modernized, what is the problem with modernizing? Why can't we? Because it's not for a lack of resources. Is there anyone that can tell me why we cannot modernize, especially since we have the best military in this country, but we can't figure out how to count our money and count our guns? We can't figure that out? Somebody help me, anybody. I'm, this is a real question. What is the problem? So with respect to clean audit and auditability, uh, we, as has been previously said, retirement of the legacy systems is a significant part of the path to do that. And so we, we do need to get after that. That's the most significant from the procurement. Let me, let me stop you right there. We need to get after that. Tell me why we haven't is my question. I, I think it's just a matter of the number of systems that we're having to uh, evaluate for retirement and incorporation of uh, a modernized business process to, to capture. Let me, let me ask you this. So can we agree that all the systems need to go? I mean, how, how modern are any of these systems? Can we not just agree that we need to scrap it and we need to get up to date? This is the same body where we're dealing with AI conversations. Like we are, I mean, we haven't even been brought up to today, let alone the future. Can we not just agree that we need to scrap and we need to move on instead of like, pontificating, because I feel like that's what's happening, and it's happening on the American people's dime. The, the approach we're taking is to promulgate standards uh, that are feeding the data between those systems. 
Uh, so regardless, I don't think it's, it's realistic that we're going to be able to clean slate them all. And so the, the systems that we have, forcing procurement standards and other standards so that the systems can talk to one another. And Mr. Chair, I know I'm out of time, but if I could just ask this last question. Can you give me a reasonable amount of time to get through to modernizing these systems? Just a, a reasonable number. I mean, there, there's, I mean, there's systems with, within my responsibility. I could speak to those, but I, I'm not familiar. And okay, so speak I, to I those. Say within a five-year period. Thank you so much. With that, I yield. Uh, Congressman Palmer. 